Nestled in the shadow of Winston-Salem resides a stately bungalow with fountains, gardens and other treasures. Renolda was the home of tobacco magnate Richard Joshua Reynolds and his wife Catherine. And a current exhibit reveals who Catherine really was before and after her marriage to one of the richest men in the country. Catherine Smith Reynolds was a businesswoman, she was a great philanthropist, but she was a feminist too, and that's um, something that we're highlighting. So we're looking at her, the later years of her, of her time, especially after the death of R.J. Reynolds. Catherine Smith grew up in Mount Airy, was well-educated and poised, and met Reynolds through a family acquaintance. The romance soon turned to marriage and intense devotion. She had a pretty aristocratic bearing, and she could think for herself, and she wasn't afraid to speak her mind, which was a bit unusual in that time period, I think, for a woman who was 30 years younger and um, who was in this company that was dominated by men at the time period. I also suspect, given the nature of the relationship that's in the letters, that he never really loved any woman quite the way he loved Catherine, that she really changed his life and he felt he was pretty madly in love with her. Together, the two powerhouses built Ronalda as a home for their growing family, as well as a working estate with a dairy, gardens, even schools for the children of their staff. But Reynolds died of cancer shortly after the estate was completed. Soon, the wealthy yet widowed mother of four began seeing the headmaster of the school on the property the dashing Charles Johnson. This relationship awakened a different side of Catherine, and the exhibit reveals her renewed interest in fashion and decor. After R.J. Reynolds' death, there's a little bit of a shift in her focus, and she wrote that I'm now working night and day for my own happiness. And uh, Catherine certainly was in mourning, but increasingly as she was building her new school, she would invite the teachers, including her new principal that she had just hired, J. Edward Johnston, to the house for dinner. They would roll up the carpets and they would dance. Uh, and this house became sort of filled with laughter and sunshine and music as Catherine moved through her morning. You get a different sense of her, her person when you actually look at the, the, the clothes and that her dresses go from really Victorian, you know, corseted kind of formal silk dresses to you know, lower waistlines, looser clothes, hemlines come up. So she was not quite a flapper, um, but she definitely embraced the new styles. The new Katherine Johnson was a supporter of the women's suffrage movement and other civic causes. We know that she was, uh, that she voted because she describes be going to the first election in 1920, and she also describes in 1918 supporting suffragists in um, North Carolina. So she, it's no surprise to me that she thought it was important for women to have the vote and that she was uh, going to cast the ballot as soon as she had the opportunity to do so. And though she died in childbirth only six years after her second marriage, her legacy, the Renolda estate, thrives as an American country home and renowned art museum. I really love the exhibit because it shows us uh, the personal side of Catherine and it shows us how she really remade her life, the actions that she took, the progressive work that she did, the uh, nature of this new romantic love in her life and the way she changed her clothes and the way she embraced the new world of leisure and uh, hospitality and made this house a place of fun and excitement. A Self in the Remaking, Catherine Smith Reynolds Johnston is on display at the Renolda House Museum of American Art in Winston-Salem. Renolda is at 2250 Renolda Road and it's open Tuesday through Sunday. For more information, give Renolda a call at 336-758-5150 or go online to renoldahouse.org.